Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Hope you guys are doing well today. I really wanted to make this video because it's such exciting news um, for only watches. Uh, this is a watch auction that takes place yearly and it, or excuse, I think believes every two years. And the goal of it is to raise money for um, a charity that supports muscular dystrophy and it just took place. And I wanted to react to some of the watches that ended up selling and give you my thoughts on um, the prices that they ended up um, achieving at this auction. I should be wearing something orange to celebrate this as that is the color of only watch. Um, but um, like I mentioned, th this is a very important, in my opinion, it's a very important auction that takes place um, during the calendar year. And when you think about the auctions that take place, um, you know, uh, throughout the, the sort of auction season, I think this is one that is always one that you want to have your eyes on. So I'm gonna go through eight lots. Uh, there were 53 lots total, 53 watches that were made. And the, the idea of this is there are brands that make sort of piece unique watches um, and, uh, and offer them at, these, um, at this auction in order to try and raise as much money as they possibly can uh, for, uh, for, for this charity that, that works with, um, with, with muscular dystrophy. And um, you know, w when it comes to this type of auction, it doesn't really, uh, this isn't a pulse of sort of where these watches should sell for. At the end of the day, this is for charity, so you will find that some of these prices are a little bit more than the estimates, which is, um, which is a given. Um, some of them actually were right between those estimates, but what's really great is I think people get around, get together and they really get behind the idea that they wanna raise as much money for charity as possible. And so we, there were some pretty insane prices that these watches ended up going for. So the first lot, lot I wanted to talk about, or the first watch was lot number uh, three. This was from Armin Strom. This was their Gravity Equal Force only watch unique piece. The Gravity Equal Force is a watch that they've created um, multiple times. I'll put a picture of this watch up on the screen. The watch itself is in stainless steel with their in-house ASB 19 movement. 41 millimeter in diameter. You've probably seen this watch very often. What's unique about this watch though is it has those orange accents, which are obviously in line with the only watch um, sort of theme. The estimate was between 16, it's about 17,000 Swiss francs and 25,000 Swiss francs. It ended up going for 38,000 Swiss francs. I like Armin Strom. I think they're doing a lot of great things with watchmaking. I've made a couple of other videos about them, um, but it's really exciting to see them participate in this, obviously, and for this watch to go for uh, the, the price that it did. The next watch is probably one that uh, everyone was looking at. This was the Automa Pige Royal Oak Jumbo Extra Thin Only Watch. This was an extra thin version of the famous Royal Oak that everyone is absolutely in love with. Um, the This watch, um, this watch is uh, has this the the beautiful um, petite tapisserie uh, dial on it, so smaller sort of um, uh, squares that sort of make up this watch, um, and uh, is in uh, it, this is the 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 uh, royal oak that everyone wants to get their hands on. Absolutely beautiful sort of slate gray dial. Only fans edition. The estimate, obviously, when you turn it over, you can see a, a beautiful case, a display case back. It was estimated to go between 160 and 320,000 Swiss francs. It went for a whopping 3.1 million Swiss francs, which one, I think, shows this is an Automa Pige. Everyone really loves them. But two, I think the fact that it's an Automa Pige allows for people to maybe bid a little bit more than they were expecting, especially for, for a piece unique for only watches. Um, so super, super exciting lot there. Um, for, for those of you, uh, us who are interested in Royal Oaks. The next watch is from a brand and I wanted to talk about this brand because they, I have seen, they've sent me some of their material for some of the watches that they've released. This is the Cypress Genève um, uh, Dice uh, only watch. Um, this is a really interesting sort of cushion form titanium case um, that has a uh, chronograph and What's really interesting, interesting about this watch is, um, is Cypress Genève has worked, done a, a ton of work to sort of expose the, the watchmaking that they're doing when you look at the physical watch. And so you have this, this completely um, see-through um, see -through case where you can actually see all the components of this watch. It is a chronograph, which is a, is a favorite, favorite complication of mine. And again, similar to the Armand Strom, it has these orange accents both, both in the bracelet or I guess the strap as well as some of the hour indicators 
and um, some of the uh, components of the movements are also orange. It's a piece unique from Cypress Genève. It's, Cypress Genève may not be known by as many collectors, um, but it, it, they're doing a phenomenal job with the watchmaking, um, with, their, with their sort of watchmaking that they're doing. Um, if you are interested in Cypress uh, Genève, it, it was their CYR 718 movement. Um, their Clipsis uh, dice only dial uh, mono pusher chronograph was estimated to go between 35,000 and 45,000 Swiss francs. Ended up going for 50,000 Swiss francs, so still above the estimates, um, but it, it wasn't a, a, as shocking as what the Automa Pige ended up going for. I think it's because this is an you know a smaller independent watch company, and maybe there aren't uh, a ton of people who were sort of well versed in what they were doing. Um, but still a phenomenal result for uh, a great cause. The next watch I wanted to talk about is lot number 21. This was a Debitune and uh, Wutleinen um, collaboration. This was the kind of magic by, the, by these two incredible watchmakers, uh, watchmaking uh, geniuses. It's a titanium cased watch. And when you look at these, these wa this watch, it really screams uh, Wutleinen and Debitune. When you see the um, turbulent side of this watch, um, you see uh, just an absolutely incredible movement that really screams Debutune. You've got these sort of rocket ship, spaceship sort of looking, um, looking movement, this beautiful turbulent. And then uh, wh when you look at sort of the dial side of this watch, you have uh, incredible finishing by Vutilain. It really, when you look at it, you're like, I, I do not think of any other, uh, other watchmakers besides these two. Um, the watch was estimated to go between 200,000 and 250,000 Swiss francs. Go figure, it went for 1.3 million Swiss francs. These two watchmakers have really come into their own, I think, and, and really shown, or there's been a lot of demand for these two watchmakers. It's very difficult to get some, some of their pieces. I think it's really great because go back 30 years, um, watchmakers like these were not getting the recognition that they are, but they are now, and what an absolutely incredible, incredible uh, price for this uh, to to have um, to to go for, and a great watch that sort of resembles what these these watchmakers did. Next, the next lot is lot number twenty six. I wanted to discuss um, this this watch because um, H Moser and um, and MBNF did sort of a collaboration where they came out with two watches where they sort of integrated some of the others, other brands um, sort of aesthetics. Um, so this is the H Moser Streamliner Cylindrical Turbial Only Watch Edition. So obviously from H Moser you're gonna get a beautiful lacquer dial. You have a beautiful black lacquer dial with a um, turbulent at 12 o'clock and this really beautiful um, angle dial that sort of faces you so you don't actually have to look down at the, to see the time you can actually look at it at an angle because the dial itself is sort of leaned up you'll see it in the pictures that i have here the dial is avanta black which is actually i believe a trademarked black from h moser which is really really interesting beautiful turbulent um, piece unique for this for this brand the streamliner was actually a watch that i i, I uh, covered on on life on the wrist um, when it came out, and I was really impressed with sort of the aesthetics of it. Um, it was estimated to go between 60,000 and 80,000 Swiss francs. It ended up going for 750,000 Swiss francs. Another testament to what H. Moser is doing uh, and has done and has created in the following that they, they have. And obviously every single one of those Swiss francs goes to a great cause. The next lot, and this was obviously one that I was keeping an eye on. If you follow, follow uh, Life on the Wrist on Instagram, you probably saw me posting about it. This is the MBNF HM10 Panda Only Watch Edition. This was um, the HM10, basically Max took the HM10, which was nicknamed the Bulldog, for the uh, sort of jaws that it was created for its power reserve indicator and also sort of the layout of this, um, of this watch. It really looked like a Bulldog. And what he ended up doing was he put panda ears on top of the, on top of the crystal uh, and put sort of like a tail on the back of the, of the, of the watch. You'll see in the pictures that I post. Um, and uh, and so this watch obviously looks like a panda when you're when you're looking at it, uh, which is beautiful, black and white sort of uh, motif here. HM10 was a, a huge hit. One of uh, Max has spoken about one of his favorite watches that he's actually created. Um, and uh, you know, I've done I've I've done a video on this watch and an article on this watch. So 
uh, if you are interested in those, I'll put a link in the uh, description of this video as well as in our article if you want to check that out. It was estimated to go between 100 and 150,000 Swiss francs. What's incredible is it went for six times that. It went for 620,000 Swiss francs. It, it's a phenomenal result for, for Max, for only watch, but I think it also shows MBNF is really coming into its own. I would say within the last two, three years, people have paid a little bit more attention to MBNF. A great example of that, that is the incredible um, excitement that people have for the LM1 and LM101. The prices of that watch have gone up at an extreme um, rate uh, when you look at you know the results from auction. And I think this is a good example of the fact that people are paying more attention to MBNF, uh, sort of the mass market um, uh, are paying a little bit more attention to them. The next lot, lot was, um, this was uh, an incredible result. So this was a Patek Philippe complicated desk clock that was um, uh, manufactured by Pat Pat Patek Philippe and, and donated for the, um, for the auction. It is a grand complication in a sterling silver cabinet um, and it has some beautiful American walnut sort of wood finishing to it as well. Um, but this is this is a desk clock. Uh, pr probably the probably not something that you were thinking would be would be donated, but it is um, a desk clock that was designed for only watch. It has some beautiful engravings in it that sort of describe, you know, it says the only one. It has only watch 2021 on it. Uh, an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal piece. Beautiful looking. The classic aesthetics that Patek Philippe has. It was estimated to go between 400 and 500,000 Swiss francs, it ended up going for 9.5 million. Piece unique Patek Flips are very hard to come by, and no wonder this, this was the price that it ended up going for. Getting a Patek Flip is very difficult, getting a complicated Patek Flip is very difficult. So, getting a piece unique Patek Flip, it's just above all of it. So, another great result for the auction. The last one I want to discuss is a watch that. Many of us probably have tried on, have experienced, um, and and really love to to. I think it's a champion of sort of the, uh, you know, uh, many people's collections, and that is a Tudor Black Bay. But this one is a Tudor Black Bay GMT in stainless steel. But what it has is, and I want to get this right, so just give me a second. Um, it has this really interesting aged stainless steel case. Um, with this sort of matte black finish to it. Um, the dial itself has a similar sort of motif to it. Um, and this is obviously one watch, a, a piece unique from Tudor in this very interesting case metal that has um, just, a, just a really interesting sort of look to it. Um, so you'll see in the pictures what this looks like. Um, it was estimated to go between 4,000 and 8,000 Swiss francs. So as, as a person who's probably participating in the auction, you're probably thinking, hey, this is a lot that I, maybe I could get, get into. Uh, maybe on the early stages, it ended up going for 650,000 Swiss francs. So this went for the same, about the same price as the MBNF HM10, which is just, just crazy to think because many of us have a GMT, a, a Tudor Black Bay GMT, um, but this one being a, it, uh, a piece unique uh, for only watches. Uh, it, it, it fetched a little bit more than what it what it normally does. So, uh, an incredible result. Those are some of the, the lots I want to discuss. I'll put a link in the uh, description of this video and on our article to the rest of the uh, lots that that um, were part of this auction. Like I mentioned, there were fifty three uh, lots, which um, raised a ton of money. I believe it was about thirty million Swiss francs. Um, which is again uh, an, an absolutely incredible, um, incredible result for for only fan, uh, only watches. Excuse me, um, only watch. Uh, it was an incredible result for for only watch. An incredible result for many of these brands, especially the smaller ones like uh, Cypress Genève uh, and uh, uh, you know MBNF to an extent. And um, and what's really important here is you know I think this is a way that. <laughs> Watch collecting and, 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 and watch enthusiasm, a lot of the times it feels very personal. You buy watches, you enjoy them yourself, and there's not a lot of giving back to, to some sort of cause. And what's really exciting about this is, um, is every, I think it's 99% of the, 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 the final um, 
amount of money that, that is raised during this auction goes to muscular dystrophy, which is an incredible cause. It, it hits home with a lot of the watchmakers who participate in this. Um, and that's really exciting. Um, and it's nice to know that, you know, our watch, this watch hobby that we all share, it's not just about, you know, consuming and, and, and sort of self-centered consuming. It's also about sort of giving back in, in this instance. So very exciting to see that. Um, I think I did, I, I believe I did a video where we discussed um, the, the lots that were coming up at auction. So if you haven't seen that, be sure to check that out. If you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to Life on the Wrist. Um, I make these every week, um, so you can, head, you can see that. We'll be discussing this and some of the other auctions that are taking place on our podcast. It will be released uh, this week. So if you listen to podcasts, be sure to search for Life on the Wrist. We're probably on your on your podcasting platform. If you want to get some more content from us, head over to our website. You can read our full, our full article for this video. You can also follow us on our social medias if you want some more watch content from us. With that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and until next time.